Good morning everyone and welcome to Port Glasgow New Parish Church Mans. We joined together this morning on Palm Sunday, Sunday the 5th of April, at slightly earlier time of 10.45. The reason we're meeting at 10.45 is there is a church service on BBC One Scotland at 11.15. You may have seen it already, it's been on for the last two weeks now. Um, the BBC have offered that space um, due to the fact that there are no church services at the moment. Everything is being done online like what we are doing now. Um, so 11.15 every Sunday on BBC One Scotland, it's called Reflections at the Key, and there's reflections, prayers, music and hymns, and it's led by various Church of Scotland ministers each week, and others too. So by meeting at 10.45 gives us an opportunity to support and watch the church service on BBC One Scotland at um, 11.15, and we'll do that for as long as we're online. At the moment we've got no indication as to when our church buildings will be open again. So for as long as we're online, we will meet on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel um, at 10.45 and 11.15. We'll join together and we support um, Reflections at the Key on BBC One Scotland. Um, I hope you're all doing well. Uh, we're of course uh, still within our lockdown at the moment, um, being asked to go out only if it's necessary and for essentials like food shops and medication. Um, it's hard, um, I don't know about you, but sometime through the week there I'm thinking, you know, what day is it? What time is it? It's, it's just strange because our normal routines are you know, completely out the window at the moment. Um, it's hard in the fact that you perhaps can't see your loved ones um, if they don't live in the same house as you and you're relying on the phone or through Skype or Facebook or whatever it may be um, to keep in contact with your grandkids or your mum or dad or whatever it may be. I know I'm finding it hard, um, you know, I've, I'm very close to my family and um, not being able to see them or just see them through a screen is, is really hard. Um, but we know we need to follow this advice and not to spread the coronavirus and you know we will of course we will get through it it is hard um, I know all we're asked to do is stay at home but of course that is hard especially you know if you've got children and you're relying on homeschooling as well and you know but we will get through it um, we continue to pray um, I continue to pray for all of you, for this parish, for the congregation. Um, this week, as part of my daily exercise, I've been walking around the parish, um, remaining local, and just walking around the parish, showing people that the church is still there, the church is still alive, we haven't just closed the doors and abandoned you, we're still here. Um, and it's been great to you know walk past people and just sort of say hello. Um, obviously, with the restrictions at the moment, I can't stand and have a full-blown conversation with people. But um, I have been able to wave at people and say hello as I walk through um, Port Glasgow Town Centre and walk down onto Coronation Park um, and came back again. And I'll continue to to do that. And that's something that I was going to do anyway. Um, if we didn't have these restrictions, was to be seen and to walk around our town and just to say hello to people and to say hello to our shopkeepers and people that I see on the street. So I will continue um, to do that throughout the next wee while. Um, I was saying during the week, if you saw the Facebook post, it'd be good to have some Palm Sunday displays um, and I gave you a template that you could have used. So if you've done that, if you've created a Palm Sunday display and um, perhaps put it on your window like we did with the rainbows, um, then please let us see the photographs. You might want to add them to our Facebook comments below or you can send an email to myself, um, that's wboyle at churchofscotland.org.uk and please let us see your Palm Sunday displays. Also, um, Easter is obviously upon us next week, so Easter Sunday. Um, it would have been great to have an Easter bonnet parade with everyone, all age, and with the kids and different things, but um, unfortunately we're not able to do that at the moment. Um, but don't let that stop you. I uh, appreciate that at the moment you can only go out and shop for the essentials, um, but perhaps you've got stuff lying around. And perhaps you're good at crafts, perhaps you're good at creating things, um, and you might want to create your own Easter bonnet if you can, um, of course. 
and it would be good to see those photographs. So although we can't meet in our church building, although we can't have an Easter bonnet parade next Sunday, um, it would be good to see some of your photographs if you've managed to create your own Easter bonnet at home. Um, just lastly, before we begin our service, um, we've been talking about our offerings. So um, the work of the church still continues um, and the work of the Church of Scotland still continues. Um, it's great if you're saving up your offerings for when we come back to the church and um, you're perhaps saving up your envelopes. Um, but there's also standing order. There's an opportunity for you to pay through standing order. And I know seven of you have done that so far in the last two weeks you've signed up for that. Um, if you need any more help or information or you think that's something you're interested in, then please do message myself or the church Facebook page um, or Carol, our treasurer. And if you need one of one of us to get in touch with Carol for you, then we can do that too. Um, so I appreciate you've got other things on your mind at the moment. There's lots going on. Um, but it was just to make people aware that you could sign up to stand in order. The work of Port Glasgow New Parish Church continues and the work of the Church of Scotland continues nationally too. So that could be something that you that you want to think about. So we join together Palm Sunday. Um, we celebrate Jesus entering Jerusalem as the crowds wave palms, cheering and shouting Hosanna. And I'm going to light this candle. And we light this candle to remember that Jesus said, For when two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So we might be on our own at the moment watching this, and um, we might be with our loved ones watching this, but we still gather. We are not gathering in a church building as a big crowd, but we still gather together. Jesus says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Let's begin today with a prayer. Let us all join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, Palm Sunday began with the crowds adoring your son Jesus, raising their voices to welcome him and praise him as the new King of Kings, a son of King David. We gather today in the comfort of our own homes as people drawn to the story of a man whose life still challenges the way we live and the way we think about the world. Our eyes see a world that has real beauty within it. We wonder at the beauty and diversity of all that you have made, all that is seen and all that is hidden. In the silence of our world, we sense a presence that we cannot define, cannot fully understand, and yet we feel drawn to it from our earliest years. God, you are the source of our being. You make your dwelling within us. We wonder at the life you have given us, the body, mind and spirit, to dwell in this world that you have made. A chance to explore the different places we live in and the different people we live with. The mind to know things and the heart to feel love for ourselves and others. Forgive us for the times when we have ignored your presence or failed to listen to your still small voice within us. Forgive us for the times when we have followed the crowd, pulled and swayed by people who would persuade us to seek to fulfil our own will and our own desires before the needs of others. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to be true disciples, when we have run away from our commitments and allowed fear to turn us from the right path. God, in your mercy, Forgive us once more. Renew us and refresh us with your Holy Spirit. Give us a desire and a commitment to follow in the way of the cross, just as Jesus did. Lord, we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Saviour. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Mark. Chapter, um, chapter 11, 
verses 1 to 11. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 to 11. It's entitled, Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found a colt outside in the street, tied at a doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing, untying that colt? They answered as Jesus had told them to, and the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, while others spread branches they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple courts. He looked around at everything, but since it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Amen, and thanks be to God for the reading of his holy word. Amen. We've heard in our reading this morning that Jesus entered Jerusalem as a royal king. But what were the people expecting from him? Did they have the wrong idea about what sort of king he would be? Let me set the scene. It was the Sunday of the week Jesus would be crucified. A great Passover festival was about to begin. Jews came to Jerusalem from all of the Roman world during this week-long celebration to remember the great exodus. A parade was forming. Everyone started to run to see what was happening. The people started to stretch their necks to see over the person in front of them. The young children crawled between the legs of the adults to see if they could gaze upon what was happening. Then everyone saw it. It was Jesus riding upon a donkey, and there were people racing in front of him, throwing palm leaves and clothes in his path. People started to shout, Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The crowd that gathered along the way started to catch the excitement, and they began to shout and run alongside the parade. When the people saw Jesus riding into Jerusalem that day, they knew that something exciting was happening. They knew that Jesus was riding as the Messiah would, and they thought they knew what that meant. They thought it meant that they would be free from the Romans. They thought it meant that Jesus was going to be their king. So they got caught up in the moment and celebrated, rejoiced at the, pic the picture that was forming in their minds. A picture of a king who had come to save them. A picture of a nation reborn. A picture of a people who would be free to be a mighty nation again. Oh, they celebrated and they danced down the street. They shouted their hosannas. What must it have been like to be there when all of this was going on? Take a few moments to think about it. What must it have been like to have been there while all of this was going on? To witness the arrival of Jesus with the excited crowds cheering, shouting and waving palms. We see there the excited crowds celebrating, dancing, shouting Hosanna, getting caught up in the moment, rejoicing that Jesus was going to be their king, the one who would save them. But had the crowd made a mistake? Is that what Jesus was coming to Jerusalem to do? Just a few days later, that same crowd who welcomed him and cheered for him, shouting Hosanna, then cried, Crucify him. 
Why though? What had changed? One minute he's being celebrated and welcomed as a new king, the next the crowd had turned against him. The crowd suddenly realised that the picture of a king that they had developed in their mind was not the picture that Jesus was painting for himself. They wanted an earthly king. But Jesus painted the picture of the suffering Messiah, one who would suffer for the sins of all people so that they would have eternal life. So the people cried crucify him because Jesus did not fill their expectations. In their minds, he let them down. They pictured a warrior king, one who would lead them into battle. They missed the point and they were of course very angry. Jesus hadn't come to exercise authority, he came to serve. He came to seek and to save those who were lost. He came to meet our needs and lift us up. He came to minister to us. Palm Sunday is the beginning of a journey, a journey which leads us to the day when we celebrate Jesus Christ risen from the dead, who offers us the gift of eternal life and forgiveness of sins. It's the story of the king who came as a lowly servant on a donkey, not in royal robes, but on the clothes of the poor and humble. Jesus Christ comes not to conquer by force as an earthly king did, but by love, grace and mercy, and his own sacrifice for his people. His is not a kingdom of armies and splendours, but of lowliness and servanthood. He conquers not nations, but hearts and minds. His message is one of peace with God. And as his followers, we can exhibit the same qualities as him. Peace, love, service. And by doing these things, the whole world will see the true king living and reigning in triumph in all of us. Glory be to the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Thank you, friends, for joining me this morning for our short act of worship. Um, I do hope the day will come when we can, um, well, I do hope the day will come soon when we can meet again in our church building. But for the meantime, I will continue to post videos here on Facebook and our YouTube channel. Next week is, of course, Holy Week. Um, so we will have a service on Thursday, Monday, Thursday. And I'm planning to have a communion service at six o'clock on Monday, Thursday. So it'll be a communion, communion service. And of course, you're welcome to join me for that. And if you have some bread and you have a small glass, for example, then please join me, please take part. This is the first time I've ever actually conducted communion because as you know, I'm a new minister. Um, so who'd have thought the first time that I administer communion would be online. Um, and this will be different because it is online, um, but I'm gonna try it and we'll see how it goes. Um, Good Friday, we will also have a service online and that will again be at six o'clock. And then of course, we'll have another service on Easter Sunday. So Holy Week, we have a service Thursday, six o'clock, Good Friday, six o'clock, and then again on the Sunday. And you're welcome to join me for all of those. So let's close our time together with the benediction. From Palm Sunday to Holy Saturday, may God in his infinite mercy grant you a journey of renewal and hope, a time of prayer and reflection, and joyful anticipation of our Lord's resurrection. May you live and serve this week in remembrance of Christ's love. And now may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all and those whom you share life's journey with, this day and always. Amen.